Uh, so we're recording. Don't say anything bad about me, okay? <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> Thanks, Fred, because after the last meeting, I realized, oh, there were probably some things I should have gotten down. And I looked at my shorthand notes and I thought, eh, I really took sh the short in shorthand. <laughs> to a what does that symbol mean that I put down there? Yeah, exactly. So this time I made sure to like write down all my questions. And But thank you for first off for making the time and then for being so prompt and then for this recording. No problem. Yes, okay. So I guess, so right. this will be um let me see so the first thing i had and i know you answered this in your email was so this is about running reports we need uh, to be able to run reports for the public health accreditation board and right. i wanted to know what's the best way to go about doing that and those reports need to be able to show goals objectives activities and timelines because i know that there are a few options in terms of what we can do and i know you said the operational plan report so if you could walk me through that. Sure. Well, a couple of things. First of all, uh, you've got the, uh, you, you guys are going full accreditation, not pathways. Is that right? So we're do, we're working on pathways now. We oh, did yeah. pathways initially, but we didn't get cleared yet. So now we have to like mid September to try it again. Okay. And after we finish that, it would be time for full accreditation if they, if they give us the, and I know this is very relevant for me to say, given VMSG symbolism, if they give us the green light, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure they will. Um, well, you know, with these plans in here, you've got everything all the way down to the, the measure level. Uh, I don't know if you guys are using them to attach your documentation. It's all available there. So literally, you can generate an operational plan of where you are in the, uh, the accreditation process using this plan and yeah. all the documents that you've submitted. So that, that's one way to do it. The other thing is, you know, FAB has what they call their six pack of plans, the minimum required plans. So you can generate a report, same thing from, for instance, with, excuse me, with your strategic plan, I can go in here and say, okay, I wanna see a operational plan report for our strategic plan, which will give you the infinite detail of everything you wanted to know. So reports menu, operational plan report, and your strategic plan, I think was maybe a little out of date, but, so here we are down at the objective level, uh, lots of stuff in here. We can also take it down to the activity level here, so we'll do that. And you guys have a lot of stuff in there. There we go. So yeah, so here's your, your operational plan report. It's got everything in it. Now, it also may be too much information in a lot of cases here. So a lot of times you're gonna generate the report at the objective level. Uh, which is, you know, what, what's the target we're trying to accomplish here versus how we're going to get there when we get down to the activity level. Now, the other thing I noticed that you don't have, well, yeah, you do in a couple of places. You don't have, for everything, you don't have people assigned as the objective and activity leads. Uh, so when you do that, it gives you some other options on reports to say, just show me everything that uh, Matthew Bratoli is the, objective lead on it, and you can generate just a report for that through the a team lead report, they call it. So is, is this the, the, the amount of data you're looking for for them, or is it uh, too much? Um, so well, let me read over what we have. Uh, goals, objectives, activities, timelines. This would show timelines too? Yeah, the timeline is right here. If you look at the activity timeline right here, 7 one through 6 of 24. That should be good. How did you say, Fred, we'd be able to condense it down into something that's more readable? Uh, well, a couple things. Number one, up here in the top right corner, what level do you want to look at? So I can go all the way down to the service level here and say, okay, we just have these four initiatives. I can take it down to the goal level underneath that, which is the each service and their goals and the traffic lights on the goals. Uh, then typically the objective level is kind of where a status report is because the objective is the finite target that you're trying to accomplish and the activities are how you're going to get there. So this would be, you know, kind of more of a, a finite description here. What it doesn't have at the objective level is a timeline though, because the, well, the objective should have its own timeline built in. So, you know, by uh, the end of uh, August, we're going to align performance management systems with the strategic plan, something along that line. 
So that would be your timeline in there. Well, you do have one down in here. So by August 2024, you're going to develop electronic payment invoice process for EH programs. So that's the kind of thing. But um, the status then tells you, you know, how far along are you? And a couple of them, you have that in there already, 50% done. So this is one way to get down to the nitty gritty. It's down at the activity level. Now, there's also a way for something like this to be able to create a, a very high level graphical interface. And basically what you're looking at is the traffic lights. So I can go back to the, let's go back to the uh, strategic plan uh, itself. This guy right down here is called VMSG Public. So when I click on that, it's going to say, do I want to summarize? Let's say the objectives for now. We'll summarize the objectives. And I click on that. And what it's going to do is for the entire strategic plan, it's going to give me a, what they call an indicator row. So it says we have 67 green and nine completed and two red and four yellow, and we're 12 days ahead of schedule. So this is the, the highest level up here to be able to do that. And then I can break this down so I can say, let's go ahead and save that. And let me get rid of these other ones for now. And then I can go down to the initiative level and say, okay, how is initiative number one doing? We'll generate the same thing. Let's go back to the objective level for that. Save that one. So this, this is very common, by the way, people breaking down a strategic plan at the entire strategic plan level and then each of the initiatives. So we can save that, and then you can repeat that for all of them. You want to generate the web page, I'll just say give me a new one here. Uh, it's going to end up looking like this. So you got the strategic plan, and then you got initiative one, uh, enhance organizational capacity and development. Um, so that, that's another way to generate the, the, the big picture summary, if you will. So you get you kind of got the the infinite detail, and then you got the high level. So, <laughs> and, and by the way, um, if you're familiar at all with HTML, this whole left side over here where the text is is kind of a, a little web page in itself. So mm -hmm. through, through HTML, you can actually put things like graphics and links in there. And what I've seen people do before is that report that I showed you for the strategic plan, the super detailed report. You can put a link in here that says, "For more detail, click here." And that report is actually an HTML file. So what you can do, wow. click on that, and it'll open up that new file that has all the detail behind it. So, and then you can again, you can break the report down by strategic initiative as well. So you can have just a report for enhanced organizational capacity and development. Again, put a link in there that says, "Hey, for you know, click here for that report." Now, how would we go about doing that? Well, it be like right clicking or what? No, no, you got to you got to understand HTML code. You got to be able to do it. Oh, in okay. Now it's really easy to do. Uh, I can probably walk through and give you an example on how to do that. And what you'd have sure. to do is you'd have to generate the report as an HTML file, which is really easy. And then you put those files up on your your web server or wherever you want to have them. And then we put the link in here. And what the link will do is I click on it, it'll open a new browser tab with that uh, detailed report in it. So that, that's one way to do it and, and getting you know, kind of both levels, the high level graphical interface, plus if they want to get down to the detail, you generate the detail report for them. Okay. All right. I think that would even go fab away. I, I think so too. <laughs> stone unturned for them <laughs> um so which of these or what sort of would it let me let me rephrase that do you think fred the operational plan report would be the one that would give them the best picture of our goals yeah now it's going to be a, a lot of detail uh but that's you know that's what fab wants they want to have the detail so the operational plan report for uh, the strategic plan, for instance, uh, the operational plan. Let me just save this here. We'll just say. Um, save that for now. So we always have that in there. Uh, and this is the link, by the way, to the one we just created. We can go in and update that and whatever we need to do. But, yeah, the operational plan report is, is where the detail is. Now, again, if you're using the uh, like the pathways plan here, let me take a look. I don't know if you guys have actually used the plan itself. We'll take a look here. 
So we're down here at the objective, which are the measures down here, and it doesn't look like uh, anything has been in here. Let me see if there's any documents attached. Uh, no, I don't see it. So it, it looks like you guys haven't used this plan. So what this is all about is if you're going through the, the process, you've got all the uh, measure or the uh, standards and measures in here for accreditation. And what people do is they'll at the objective level here, uh, go down to the domain goals, the objective level where the measure is, here's document management, that's where you'd attach the documents. And then in that report, that little checkbox I clicked at the top that said documents will show every document that's attached down through there. So that's another one. If, if you're going to use that now, if you guys are already passed that point, then you know I wouldn't go back and, and invest the time to, to use it. But for the next step, as you're going to go into full accreditation, I would highly recommend using it because that way you have a report that shows your exact status on going through all of the 10 domains and all the documents that you have and how far along are we and the traffic lights. And, and by the way, We've shown FAB that before. The site reviewers, they love that because it's all concise in one place. They don't have to go scattering around. All the documents are right there for them and everything. Greg, are you there? I'm here. Did you okay, great. I, I think the heavy rain has been causing some some issues because I've got some yeah, notification that's like audio connection has been lost. <laughs> did, did you hear that last one about the uh, accreditation report? Yeah, you said the what was it? You said the really detailed one is what is what they would be looking for the most. Well, yeah, for for like your strategic plan. But if you're in the um, accreditation plan itself, if you start, so if you guys decide you know to go into full accreditation after you get the pathways, um, and then I would suggest using this plan, and then as you navigate down the domains and get down to the measures, this is where you're going to attach the documents that are required. So in this case. The community health assessment will be attached right here. Um, so then when you generate the report for the uh, local accreditation group, it's going to have all of the status for every uh, standard and measure all the way down. Plus, it's going to have all of the documents showing where they're attached down in there. Uh, and it, it's a nice tool for you, too, because you can go in and say, scan down there and say, oops, we forgot to document, you know, measure 3.1.2a or whatever it happens to be in there. And, and by the way, that's going to be a nice report that FAB's going to want to see because it's going to show them exactly where you are in the, in the status going through. But then again, you know, the, 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 where the, the detail hits the road kind of is in those six-pack uh, plans. So the strategic plan, your CHIP, your emergency ops, your QI, and your workforce development, uh, that's the same thing I'm doing. I would generate the full operational plan report all the way down to the activity level there because that's going to give them you know, that's kind of their job is to, to evaluate it at that level. And by the way, the more detail you have, the happier they are because they don't want to be going, well, you kind of forgot to do this or you kind of forgot to do that. Right. No, we could we could tell based on their comments. It's like <laughs> spell it out for them. Yeah. Yeah. Lay, lay it all out for them. Uh, so the next thing, Fred, I want to ask you about, because I think that's all for the operational, for um, running work. And if it's not, and if there's more, you'll probably hear from me within like a few days. But <laughs> You know what, if I'll I move mean. on. Of course. <laughs> but I'll move on to the next thing. So I know this is what we talked about last time about project-based activities, quality assurance activities, and quantitative measurement yeah. activities could we go over those again yeah let me take i'm through. pretty sure i understand them well enough but i wanted to know if you could walk me through it again yep let me uh, take you down to the um usa public health and we'll kind of go down through um i think i actually have a demo test here and i have all the different activities in there so uh QA, QA, QM, project. Okay, so uh, project-based activity. Project-based activity is going to be 85% of what you put in the system. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's basically going to be whatever you can consider a project that can be completed in a time frame. So in uh, this case, I don't, I don't really have a next project, but it might be something like, um, you know, build the training content. Remember we did for tobacco cessation. Uh, build the right. training content. 
which would include, you know, doing some PowerPoints, uh, doing some videos, doing some user guides. Then the project-based activity, you're going to come up with a performance metric. Uh, the performance metric is real simple. How do I know when I've successfully completed the activity? So if we're building content, once we've created the content, we're done with the activity. So that's the project. The time, the beginning and ending date are the your initial time frame when you create the activity. And then typically, not typically, but sometimes the ending date creeps out as things happen, you know, like COVID happened and they creeped out by two years, that sort of thing. So you can adjust these as you're moving, which always gives you that target number. Uh, the measurement over here is going to be by default percent complete. But there are a couple of other options in there if you want to. Uh, and, and the way you get to those options is this little guy right here, the wizard. So you'll see down here at the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. if, if you have a, an activity that is just done or not done, you can say complete. And you'll notice over here we have a 0 to 100%. In this case, if I say complete, it changes to a checkbox. So the checkbox in here is 100%. Unchecked is 0%. So it's just for, for that activity that, you know, there's no no incremental uh, improvement or no incremental increase. It's just on or off, done or not done. So you can just use the checkbox here to do that. And then the other one was if you have an activity that uh, has a yes, no answer. So have you completed X, Y, Z or whatever it happens to be? You get a yes box. Yes is 100%. Uh, unchecked or no is 0%. So that is the, the activity. Let me uh, go off and go back on here. Now, uh, talking about the people. So down here is where we assign activity team leads and team members. So I'll click on this guy. I'm going to open it up to the whole department here. So the left column are team members, everybody who's involved in the team of whatever the activity happens to be. Typically, it's a single person who's the team lead. So in this case, we have William assigned as the team lead. So his job is to guide these people to do whatever the activity is. And then the email notification is that real-time planning. So that's the uh, emails that go out to everybody to go back and update their assigned activities. So in this case, it would probably be William, because he's the lead, <coughs> would get the email to go back in and update this particular activity. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the other side you have down here is the external partners. So there's a potential that you're going to be working with some outside partners. Uh, you can put in the outside partners. There's a if you're an, an org admin, there's a, a database, uh, a partner database on the main menu, and you go in and put in the partner organization with lots and lots of information. You don't have to put it all in, but you can. And then you got the contacts within that organization. So at this time, I've assigned Andrea Schoen at Andrea's Car Seat Installation to be my partner. So these are external partners who are working with you on whatever the activity happens to be. In this case, maybe it's installing car seats or whatever it happens to be in there. Now, if you want to make these external partners part of that uh, email notification, they have to become users. So you got to add them as a system user, and then you can put them up here and give them that email notification, which is indicated by the blue here. The blue around the L indicates uh, William is a team lead with email notification. Fred is a team member with email notification. So that's what those are about. Any questions on project? Project management, I think I think that one's been pretty straightforward. I did want to ask you, Fred, about metrics, because I know we get to decide like what sort of metrics we want to assign to each thing. Right. So something that some of my colleagues asked me about was, what about, say, for example, if it's like, old i don't know and meetings throughout the year and if it's not based on meetings and it's instead based on how many people don't show up so technically we want the number to be zero uh -huh. how would we deal with keeping like zero as the target is that possible based on like the values that vmsg would have or is there yeah, and that would, to me, that would probably be a quantitative measurement activity. And your target number is going to be in here. So if you're trying to get to zero, I'm trying to think how. Um, yeah, if you put in a zero target, unfortunately, uh, well, you know, there's another way to do it, and that is using the QA activity. So the QA activity has the ability to actually look at less is better. 
So here's the wizard for that. So I'm going to say, I'm going to, well, let's use a different one here. Uh, okay, where's my wizard? Okay, here we go. So uh, you're saying it's an annual uh, cycle, and it's going to begin on, uh, let's say it's on 7-1. Uh, Is your fiscal year 7-1? Okay, 7-1. So for the fiscal year, now down here I can say it's going to set the traffic light automatically based on a couple of things. So number one, if it's greater than or equal to 10, the light's going to be green. If it's less than or equal to five, the light's going to be red. Now, if lesser is better, then I can just click on this guy and flip it around and say now if it's less than, oh, let's say two, it's going to be green. And if it's greater than five, it's going to be red. And then you can put in whatever the, the metric is in here. So that that's one way to do it. And this is going to repeat on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of that what leads, for? Yeah, yeah. And that leads me to something else, Fred. For stuff that does repeat on an annual basis, like a year down the road, would it clear? And what would it do with the original data? Or would it, like, duplicate the activity? Yeah, what you've got to do at the end of the, the cycle, if you're going to clear it, is just go in here. So we have a 2 in there. I'm just going to wipe it out. I'm going to put in a minus 2. And now it's going to – whoops. I'm sorry. I did that wrong. In this case, I'm just going to put in zero. I'm going to start all over again at zero. So if, in fact, I, you know, I'm at the, the beginning of the year and we're currently at zero, and you're going to keep track of this as you move forward during the year. So if you get to uh, three, I think, yeah, two to five, so three would be yellow. If I set this in here to three, it's going to set the light to yellow, so it gives you a visual indication of, of where we happen to be at that point in time. Yeah, so you, you've got to manually clear it. It doesn't automatically clear the uh, the value. And that's even the case for something that repeats. We still need to go in and do it ourselves? Yeah, this is the, the at the end of the, the year when you're done and you go in and reset the start date. So every time you save it, it's going to ask you, do you want to update the start date? So in this case, we're going to say no. We're going to leave it at seven one. But once you get towards the you know six thirty of next year, you might want to go in and say, yeah, I want to update the start date. It's going to make this seven one of twenty five. Let's say and move forward. At that point in time, you're going to go in and put in the the current value. In that case, it might be zero. You might have none, or you might say, you know, we've got depending on what you're counting in there, I guess, as to what you put in there. If that makes sense. Um, one thing I was, I was talking about on the QM activity, uh, mm -hmm. you can go in and let's see, let's change this. To, yeah, there we go. So I can go in here and say, uh, if I want to set this back to zero, I put in minus 80 and there we go. It clears it back to zero. So on the QM activity to reset it, because it's keeping a running total in there, you just go in there and put in a minus number and it'll set it back for you. Oh, okay. I should go so the QA activity is something that's repetitive and automatically sets the traffic lights based on a value, either the less than or equal to or the greater than or equal to. You choose that by clicking on the, uh, uh, the little guy right here, the less than or equal to sign. You can flip that back and forth. And when you click it, it'll clear the values just to make sure you don't have the wrong size in the wrong place here. Move that back and forth. Um, and then in the QM activity, basically what you're doing is – counting for specific target number in here. Uh, you can say decimal or dollars. Uh, you're going to uh, create a metric type, in this case, percent of stores receiving routine health inspections. And uh, you got your choice of this one is just putting in a value, and then this one is uh, putting in an incremental value. So I might go in and say, I'm going to add five to this. I'm going to save that. Add five to it here. Or two, if I hit the right button, it would be five. Click that. Now it says we're at 75 and we're up at 100%. And, and again, this one you can go forward and back uh, with pluses and minuses. Okay. Now, if you do put in a zero target on this one, uh, it's going to take out the percent calculation because the zero would be your denominator, which obviously you can't divide by. 
So it's just going to take out the percent calculation. In that case, all you're doing is counting something. How many vaccinations did we do last month? How many medications did we distribute? That sort of thing. You just want to know how many without a target. Okay. I can see us using that quite a, quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, and that was added. Um, one, uh, one of our departments in Ohio was counting um, um, some kind of uh, something outside the water. Um, I, I don't remember what it was, something they were counting outside of their department, but they were kind of counting uh, because the other department couldn't do it. And then they were charging them at the end of the month for counting um, sewage inspections, I think maybe it was. Anyhow, something like that. So we just made it so that if you put a zero target in there, it just counts. That's all it does. Okay. Curious, Fred, where in Ohio? Because I used to live in Ohio. Um, well, I lived in Ohio too. I lived in Dayton and Cincinnati, both. Right. I remember you telling me that once. Where did you live? I lived right outside Cleveland in Parma. Okay. I was there for two years. Yep. Yeah, I lived. I went to Wright State University in uh, in Dayton, and I uh, worked for the city of Fairborn, Ohio, which is right outside Dayton mm. for many years. So, yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. This one was in Middletown, I believe, is where the, oh. the health department was, in between Dayton and Cincinnati, right. which I used to drive right. by a lot because I lived in Dayton and worked in Cincinnati for a while. And then I moved yeah. to Cincinnati and started working in Dayton, so I, <laughs> I couldn't figure out where I wanted to be. I remember learning about Middletown because we've got a Middletown here in Connecticut, too. And I just thought, oh, Middletown here, Middletown there. Yeah, probably. I wonder how many there are in every state probably has a Middletown between two big cities or something. Yeah. Oh, I don't. I would not be surprised with that. <laughs> what else can I show you? What else? Yeah, yeah. So um, this was something I was going over yesterday, Fred. The graph near the wizard. Could we go over that a little bit? Uh, because the yesterday... Yeah, so yesterday, two of my colleagues, they were putting in some data, and then they wanted to see, like, would it show a change over time? Yeah, that one. Okay, yeah, let me show you where that comes from. Let me go back to um, Tobacco 2024 and navigate down here so I have some real data to work with. So this is the timeline chart. So in this case, we're saying we're going to reduce smoking at Wayne High School by 25% by the end of the school year. But it's going back is to the very first day when we started the program, we were at a 0% reduction. And then it's counting. Uh, so what, what it's doing basically is just charting the saves. And let's go back to here. So every time I hit the save button here with whatever data I have anywhere in here, it's going to save a history record. The history records are right here under the hourglass. So you'll notice it's in reverse chronological order. So it says Fred Erickson on 815 of 23 added the uh, objective. It was a green traffic light. It was objective number one. Here's the objective and it was at a 0% reduction. And then over time, you can see where things were added and updated uh, and the status changed over here. So this status is what's being mapped. Now, a couple of things you can do with this. You notice if you are a org admin or manager level user, you'll get these fields down here. I can, well, here's what happens a lot of times. You're showing somebody the system and you're hitting the save button a couple of times and it ends up putting duplicate records in there. You can go up and click on the date here, go down here and hit the red X and it'll relief, it'll delete that record. Or I can put in a record that maybe it got deleted or never got added you know, before the, uh, the beginning date. So I can put in a record from here. I can change the values to maybe 10% reduction and maybe it was a different objective lead or whatever, save it, go back over to here. It'll be the top one, click on it, change the date to 529 of 22, save it, it moves down to the bottom of the chart. So that's that's where the charts come from, and this is all the data behind there. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yesterday, my colleagues, they put in something they were not sure if it showed, like, how it's been changed over time, or if it would be, like, if we, if we do it all at once, how that would display. So I think this is more like a, if you do it on, say, last week and you do it the following week and then the following week it'll show like yeah and, and by the way uh, there's a lot of other variations up here so you can look at a specific date range you can say i just want to see one value let's say you're entering it every week and i just want to see one value per month so by selecting that you're saying i just want to see of the four values i entered i want to see just the last one in this case last value some cases, if it's a, a little chart that's going up and down, up and down, down at the bottom here, you may want to see the average value for that period of time. So 
So I want to see the average for the month uh, appearing in the chart. So that's kind of what that's all about. So it gives you the mm -hmm. values. Now, again, if you are an org admin or a manager user, you can save that. So click on the save button and what it's going to do is save the chart exactly how you set it up by date, you know, by month, by time frame. Uh, I can go over here and say I want 100 percent scale on it. Uh, then you're going to save it. Everybody else who goes into the chart is going to see your saved values. Now, during the time they're in there, they can change them around and update them. But unless they're a manager and org admin, they can't save them. So the next time they go back in, it's going to go back to your saved values. Okay. Those are all the tweaks that you can make to the chart. Right. Um, I think. I think that might be it, Fred. And I hesitate to say that because I always feel like there are more <laughs> questions coming. But well, if there are, because after after looking through the video, I will take out the key points, give it to my colleagues, yeah. see if that answers every question. And if not, you can probably expect to hear back from me pretty soon. I will look forward to it. And I'll tell you what, I will um, post this video up on YouTube and send you the link. All right. Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Fred. And then if you do need anything, you know where to find me. Thanks. Uh, of course. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day. And I, ho I hope you get some rain soon. Yeah, please send us a little bit. I'll try to send you a little bit more heat. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Thank Take you. Care.